Well, I think uh, the object is communicating just how rich the Christian tradition has been and how varied, uh, what a great resource it is. So the last 50 years have seen tremendous efforts of uh, making available mystical classics, often by having to translate them into English, of course, because people today don't have the languages that a very elite group had in the past. Today we want to make that material available to a wide audience in the language that they will understand so they too can profit from the kind of richness that the tradition has, uh, has left us. And I believe reading the mystical authors is a key part, in a certain sense, for being able to lead a, uh, a mystical life. You know, one example that uh, struck me some years ago, uh, I was out in California for a, a, a theology conference, and uh, I met a, a Jesuit there, introduced me to a woman, housewife, uh, California, who had a deep, rich, mystical life, including all sorts of very special experiences. And, you know, she went to her parish priest at one stage, and he thought she was kind of crazy, and she should drop all that. But she went to talk to this Jesuit who got her reading the mystics of the past, especially mystical women. And she saw that she was not strange. She was not crazy. Uh, what she was having and experiencing in her life was something very close to what these great mystical women had also experienced from centuries before. So, you know, that encouraged her uh, to keep on that path uh, and gave her the resources that she needed by saying, aha, uh -huh, I can understand now what's happening to me because I read this in Angela Foligno or, or some, other, some other mystic. You know? Every Christian, as I said, is, should be called to a deeper awareness of God's presence and therefore should be involved in a prayer life that, and reading of the scriptures, uh, and all the things that are part of the mystical life. And again, the, the mystical life, I think, is rooted in the Christian life. That is, the mystical life is not something that's very individual and lonely. Somebody goes away, you know, off to the mountaintop or something like that. Great mystics, many of them were indeed monastics and others, but they lived in the midst of the Christian community and the, the practices that led them to a deeper awareness of God were reading of the scriptures, uh, prayer life, uh, a life of asceticism and some uh, self-discipline, etc., spiritual guidance from others. I mean, that, that's where you find mysticism. Uh, you don't find it in some very, you know, very solipsistic, very personalized, very individualized kind of... Uh, uh, mode of living, even in those who've been dedicated, like some of the the, the desert monks, to separating themselves from society, they're still left with an obligation for society.